Hey, what's up everybody? It's your girl, Smart Sister, and this is the Smart Sister Show. And today is our hump day healing, or healing on hump day. I keep switching it around, y'all know I'm a little getting a little low. But anyway, um, today I wanted to talk about anxiety and PTSD. Now, basically, this is a series on intergenerational trauma. And as I said, uh, please go look at the first show where I give much more of a description of what it is. But just so you can understand where I'm going with this is for uh, black people, when we look at how fear even has been passed down through our DNA and our the effect of the emotional uh, trauma that we experienced through slavery now some people don't want to believe that i believe that and when you start studying it and follow what i'm talking about with the different symptoms you will see some of the ones that you have personally uh things you've seen in your family uh whatever that is the next area right now i'm doing symptoms the next area we'll be talking about is how it's transmitted how it's been transmitted through the centuries so now today anxiety and PTSD. Now, a lot of things with intergenerational trauma are uh, mistaken for other mental health um, disorders, say PTSD or anxiety or whatever, but they're still a part of the whole uh, issue of intergenerational trauma. Now, I don't know about you guys, I've had an anxiety attack several times and it is awful. Okay, you, I always tell people, it kind of feels like, think about, you just come out of somewhere and you go, oh, where are my keys? Oh, that feeling like that, imagine feeling like that for an hour at a time. Now, usually, you know what, it, it hits you and then your body is already wired to react so you can deal with it. And, you know, that flight of, fright of flight type of uh, reaction, but imagine having anxiety where you're feeling like that for hours at a time. Your body it gets exhausted. That's why a lot of black folks are just physically and mentally exhausted because of the anxiety that we have to learn to deal with from uh, an early age, and you all know it. Many of us have had to deal with, um, in your neighborhoods, living maybe in somewhere that's not so safe or having to go through an area that's not so safe. The anxiety of that, the anxiety of when you're driving and the police stopping you. Now, we already know what that can bring. I've been to where I've uh, driven out in a certain area and like I said, if I don't have a, a a broom and a mop in my car, then they're going to stop me because they're like, what are you doing out here? I've had cops stop me for that, right? And I'd say, well, I'm visiting a friend. What friend? See, they figure, oh, you couldn't know nobody that lives out here. All of that. Y'all know that we deal with little microaggressions, uh, anxiety all the time. And most of us learn how to let it roll off us like water off a duck in order to stay sane. That's what we do. But sometimes you, you the anxiety is too much. And because you're in such a, a, a um, state of being on alert and being afraid, just like I talked about last week, fearfulness. Well, this is just a byproduct of that. Being feared, fearful of what could happen to you or what has happened to you and you're just re-experiencing it and you just learn to cope. And unfortunately, too many of us learn to cope. Drink by drinking. That's why a lot of people are alcoholics. That's why a lot of people are sexaholics. That's why people do crack, do uh, cocaine, do whatever. A lot of times it's always to calm yourself from the anxiety and to take it away for a little while. Okay? That is the main reason. Same thing with uh, PTSD. You already know uh, the the trauma 
of what happened to our ancestors is passed down and so we have different reactions to things or or uh hyper vigilance in the sense that we just overreact sometimes to something simple you all know i'm sure you had a family member or a friend or somebody that you're like what in the hell is wrong with her why is she doing this where they just overreact they just go off the deep end you know just pissed off whatever a real in, a, a, a inappropriate response to something that maybe was not that serious but it's treated that way okay so that's how a lot of people deal and they uh go into a tizzy until they can calm themselves down or as i said they'll go do something that will calm them down okay that is all a symptom of the intergenerational trauma okay and we have got to come to terms with all that look at ptsd okay that happens to a lot of people right when uh they experience some kind of trauma it could be them seeing their parents fight or they could have witnessed a murder of some sort or that's why so many people come back from uh wars that are soldiers that have it because of the horror of some of the things they've had to see or do so the same thing has happened with us in the past like i've talked about before black men being made to have sex with their mothers with their sisters uh fathers um you know all of that now can you imagine somebody making you have to do that i know of another story i think i've related before an older gentleman that i knew that used to be working the yards of uh many um rich white families going to their house being the yard guy and he told me one time uh the white woman wanted him to have sex with her and he was like no <laughs> i'm not writing my own death certificate and she told him flat out, well, if you don't, I'll tell him you raped me anyway. And that man, he told me how he was so scared. He don't know how he did it, but he was able to go ahead and push it back in his brain and have sex with the woman. And then he never went back to that job. And do you know this white woman started driving around uh, near his neighborhood looking for him? See that kind of shit? that our ancestors have been through men as well as women okay so when y'all hear me talk about this stuff and you want to you know go all kumbaya on me this is not the place until we deal with the real trauma that was caused by the evil inhumanity of white folks then nothing's ever gonna change and 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 we'll never get anywhere because you've got to deal with it talking about it and talking about the truth we're not lying on anybody so if if that is indeed the case then white folks got to deal with their own stuff and then we got to deal with us see that's why they don't want nobody uh to know history for real and they've made everything all flowery and you know we were happy little slaves singing negro spirituals and everything wasn't that bad when it was they've done some cruel inhumane things to us that just boggles the mind if you go back as i said last week and go look at some of the things that they've done okay and so face it the anxiety you feel, the PTSD you feel, you need to go inside. You need to, once again, get therapy. I'm, I'm not trying to be nobody's therapist. I'm just saying from my observation, what I've seen and what impact it's had on us. So that's all the more reason why you've got to get therapy. It's too much. That's why so many of us, you know, black thing, black people used to be, it was two things we didn't do unite or kill ourselves okay look how many folks nowadays black folks commit suicide now y'all know that's unheard of as much as we've been through we don't didn't used to do it 
Okay, now it's happening way more than it used to be. And I think it's because so many of us have moved away from family, moved away from the support systems that we used to have. And it's getting to us now. Okay, in this world that we're living in right now, it's too much for a lot of people, not just us. So that is the point why we've got to deal with this anxiety and then we've got to fr confront all of it because glazing it over, thinking, oh, white people ain't the same. I'm not going to treat them a certain way. I'm not telling you to treat them any kind of way. I'm telling you to see and understand what they've done. That's it. And then you can better understand why things are going on. You know, everybody want to act like white folks didn't get uh, racist until Trump came in office. Are you kidding? Are you fucking kidding? They're doing everything they've always done. Just because we got cell phones, you can see it more. That's all. Nothing has changed. These are the same people that have always been there. Look at these angry mobs of white folks mad and wanting to burn up books and doing all this stuff. That's that same face when you go back in the 60s and look at those old pictures. Same face. Same thing. The faces of those looking up at, at brothers that had been lynched. Same face. Even the little kids. Okay. So stop it. Look at what the hell is right here in front of you. I don't know what else white folks uh, can do for you not to believe what is going on. Okay. And that's all this bullshit is. All this shit didn't start with Trump. Trump just didn't give a damn and to say whatever the hell he want to say. And that's the Republicans period. If you ask me. And I ain't mad at it because the one damn thing about them, they gonna let you know what they will and won't do, period. Don't give a damn what you think. Okay? Whereas we already know uh, what the other groups do. And I, this is this our healing day, so I can't get off into politics. But that's just it, people. In order, you, have, you can't heal what you can't acknowledge. If you can't acknowledge the true pain and 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 the things that you've been through how can you heal it and i'm not saying that there aren't people that are happy hell i'm very happy with my life i am so satisfied because i have dealt with my stuff i have uh moved forward and dealt with anything that i got so right now i'm pretty damn happy and pretty damn chill even in the midst of all this stuff going on. Because I don't trip because nothing is new under the sun. And things going to be what they going to be. Okay. That's basically it. I'm just saying it when you, you, you get into yourself and learn to love yourself and understand your people. You'll be a lot better off. You will find some peace. Because a lot of us act like we in peace. We're not at peace. Not at all. Not at all. That's why a lot of people do what they do. That's why uh, many people treat their family members uh, the way they do. Let's face it. A lot of black mothers, the anxiety and damn PTSD uh, that they've experienced, that directly impacts their children. That directly impacts their relationships. And that's why some mothers can't really be mothers. They're too stressed out and messed up themselves. Okay. I just saw a post, um, I think on Facebook or something, this girl was talking about, she had a baby with a guy cause he really wanted a kid and then he left her. And so now she's like, I'm stuck with this kid that I didn't want. And I just don't know what I'm gonna do. And he, he is getting on my nerve and I'm sitting here like, what happened to the humanity? Oh, you had a baby with a man you wasn't married to. That's your first damn mistake. Okay, the baby can't help how I got here. And then where is your motherly instinct, love, whatever? Now, yes, everybody knows how difficult it is to be a parent. But you decided to be one. Okay, so that means you got to take everything that comes with it. 
So our damn kids, you see what I'm saying? So how is that kid going to grow up knowing that his mother didn't even want him? Just sick of him and just raising him because she has to. So you don't think that's a, a, a product of intergenerational trauma? You don't think it's going to be passed on to him? So when he grows up or whatever, what impact that's going to have on his personality? Because it's more than a notion for you to think your own mother doesn't love you. That's some trauma right there. So that's what I'm saying. We have these these cycles and just things that just keep going on and on and on, not breaking the cycle that's causing all this trauma in our lives. Now, she probably needs to go get there because what are you putting all of your faith and everything into a man for the, that's making you a promise with no real backup? No, you get a ring on your finger. You get a birth. You get a, a marriage certificate. You get. Why would you lay up with a man and have a baby when there's no reason for you to have a baby in this day and age if you don't want one? Okay. So once again, something was wrong with her. Something is wrong with him. You know, all these brothers leaving all these babies and not taking care of them because they don't feel no connection. And that's something I'm going to talk about next week. But that loss of any kind of feeling of connection to anybody is the reason why a lot of relationships, a lot of other stuff nowadays doesn't happen. That's anxiety. That's PTSD. Okay? So go look up this stuff. Like I said, it's, it's, it's all out there. And once you start understanding the all the ways that you deal with your anxiety, maybe now you can understand why some people in your family may have acted the way they did your parents, whatever, when we're suffering from this anxiety and don't know what to do with it, that unfortunately is a problem. Okay, so thank you guys for coming through again. Please, if you like this video, let me know. Um, subscribe so you can get notifications and hit the notification bell so you can get it. But I try to put these out every Wednesday and I'm just going to take however long it takes for us to go through all a lot of the symptoms and then how they show up in our lives so we can start breaking that cycle. We got to break the cycle. It's time to end all of that and be free of our, in our heads so we can move forward and live your best life. That is my goal. Some justice and the ability to live and be who I am. That's the point of all of this. So as I said, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you guys next week.